Well, okay, now that I got your attention, hello everybody and welcome to my little lecture about switching to a Linux audio system. My name is George, I'm a member of the Open Source Audio Meeting Cologne and in my demonstration you will get all the relevant information to start right away with recording on a Linux system. Uh, this demonstration addresses itself to Windows and Mac users who are interested in doing audio on Linux as well as on Linux users who have never done audio production uh, uh, before. Well, uh, you will find a lot of parallels uh, between Windows, Mac and Linux concerning the workflows and uh, 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 the technologies, but there are also some uh, uh, particularities which I was going to show you right away. But first, uh, let me do a little introduction into all this uh, theory and all the terminology and things like that. Uh, first of all, well, w if you want to start doing recording, you need a computer, of course, and you need audio hardware. Well, nowadays, most of the audio hardware is equipped with a USB interface. And my little demonstration, I'm using such a uh, USB audio interface. It's a, well, combination of audio interface and uh, a controller from Native Instruments. It comes with two inputs, two outputs, and an integrated MIDI interface. And for doing audio record, um, MIDI recording, I'm using this little keyboard. It's the Cork Nano Key 2. Okay, uh, normally m the audio hardware is um, made for Windows and Mac OS. Windows users might ask themselves now, hmm, is it necessary to uh, uh, install a driver on Linux? That's not necessary because Linux comes with a hardware driver which is called ELSA. It's deeply integrated into the Linux uh, uh, system and uh, recognizing and detecting this uh, um, audio hardware is done uh, uh, automatically. Well, okay, now we got this. The next thing, of course, you will work with digital audio workstations. <coughs> On uh, Linux, there are a great number of different digital audio workstations, all with their own concept, all with their own layout and things like that. Uh, for my little demonstration, I will use the Ardour digital audio workstation. It's, well, the most mature digital audio workstation on Linux. And, uh, well, it's, it orientates itself uh, on the... Uh, worldwide appreciated and known Pro Tools uh, uh, sequencer from Avid. And well, when you w are working with digital audio workstations, of course, you want to refine your recordings with sound processors. And on Linux, you can also use plugins for that. And uh, well, uh, in Difference to Windows and Mac OS, on Linux there are several plugin formats. The most modern plugin formats nowadays are called LV2 and Linux VST. Well, Windows Mac users might think now VST, well, that's very known, and yes, indeed, uh, Linux VST comes from uh, uh, the company Steinberg who has uh, developed this interface format mainly for their Cubase and Nuendo digital audio workstation. But nowadays, VST is, uh, well, let's say, the most used plugin format in the freeware world. And, well, it's also uh, uh, existent in the Linux world. But beware, if you now think you can copy your Windows or Mac OS plugins onto a Linux system, unfortunately, that won't work because Linux VST plugins have to be specially compiled for a Linux system. So, unfortunately, it's, this makes no sense. Well, and now I'm coming to a particularity on the uh, uh, 
Linux, uh, in the Linux world, and these are called sound servers. A sound server is a background application that manages all the in and outcoming audio streams and in addition to that, such a sound server is also capable of distributing uh, all these streams between several active applications. Okay, Windows and Mac users uh, now think of the rewire interface, which was developed by Steinberg and uh, Propellerhead, but uh, on Linux, those sound servers are far more capable than this rewire interface. Um, for uh, uh, working with a sound server, um, for doing audio production, there's one sound server uh, that's highly recommended for using, and it's called Jack. Jack, that's an acronym for a Jack Audio Connection Kit. And uh, the advantage of using Jack is uh, its low latency behavior. So if you encounter uh, delays or blurry sounds, things like that, it will not come from the Jack server. There are other problems, for example, at the audio hardware or things like that. Okay, so now we get the picture, we got a hardware driver, we got the sound server, and we got the uh, uh, audio applications. So now let me show you a little audio scheme so that you can get an idea of how this is all working together. We got the audio hardware, which is detected by the hardware driver, ELSA. Then we got the audio applications, which are started from the Linux operating system. Those applications are capable of loading the plugins. And then we got the Jack sound server, which is, well, let's say, uh, some kind of layer between the hardware driver and the audio applications. We can see him, well, as some kind of well, communication officer between the hardware and every active uh, uh, application. So you can connect everything to everything from everything. Uh, uh, the possibilities are, well, nearly endless. So that's this picture. And as I have told you, Jack is a background uh, application. Then you might ask yourself now, hmm, how can I manage and uh, uh, define parameters on the Jack server? Well, nothing simpler than that. For this purpose, we got several front ends. What I'm showing you here is on a KX Studio distribution. And KX Studio is coming with uh, uh, a front end that's called Cadence. And as you can see, Jack status, the server, is already started. And uh, um, at the same time, in this front end application, you can also define the parameters of your audio hardware. We can do this on clicking on the configure button. And there you see Jack settings. On the left side, the column, you see ELSA as the hardware driver for the USB hardware. And in the device area, you see that I have already hooked up the RIC Control 3 interface as an input and audio output device. You can also define the number of input and output channels as well as the sampling rate and the sample buffer size. So, Doing settings in this dialog is done within any seconds, uh, so that's not a problem. Okay, the next thing uh, I want to show you is this row over here saying ELSA MIDI. You see ELSA MIDI bridge is running. This starts another background application which is called ELSA to Jack MIDI daemon. Its purpose is that uh, the USB MIDI hardware is visible in the sound server environment of Jack. So if you want to do MIDI recording with it, it's uh, uh, necessary to uh, start this process. Okay, and uh, uh, the next thing, uh, as I have said, you can connect everything to everything with everything. Uh, there is another uh, application which is called 
Katya, and as you can see over here, it's some kind of uh, graphical routing matrix. All those uh, rectangles are uh, representations of uh, inputs, outputs, and software. For example, the rectangle saying system with the blue capture arrows are the representations of my physical audio inputs of the audio interface. And on the other hand, system playback are the physical outputs of my audio interface. In the middle, you see the representation of the Ardor digital audio workstation. We got two tracks, Sonoy arrangement, final. That's, uh, that's the stereo track where I've played the jingle at the beginning. And you can see we have lines between the physical inputs, outputs, and Ardor. These are the connections, and as you can see, Capture 1 and 2 are automatically routed to the stereo audio track for, from the, for the jingle. So you can disconnect it in choosing the, uh, uh, right, the right uh, um, channel, and uh, doing new connections is simply done by clicking and dragging from the source to the destination. Nothing simpler than that. So I think you get now the picture of it. And I think we can start uh, recording something so that I can show you the possibilities uh, uh, on a Linux system uh, uh, for doing recordings only in a digital audio workstation as well as with the capabilities of the sound server. So, my first recording will be an audio recording in using the internal plugins of a digital audio workstation. So, let me create a track. And loading some plugins. As you can see over there, type, there are two types, LV2, which I have mentioned already, and LATSPA. LATSPA is, well, nowadays a little bit outdated plug-in format, but it's still existent and still in use. Uh, it depends on uh, what kind of digital audio workstation you will use. Not every digital audio workstation is capable of loading every uh, plug-in format. Uh, it depends uh, uh, what you will use. Ardor, uh, for example, is also capable of loading Linux VST plugins. But now, for the moment, let me choose some plugins for my first recording. It's the room simulator, a phaser, and the red foot pedal. So now you see over here in the channel strip, I, got, I have loaded three plugins. You can open the user interface in a simple double click. And let me now tweak the parameters a bit. Okay, the next thing I have to do is arm the track for recording pushing the in button for getting the direct monitoring. So, and now I'm taking my guitar. And let's see what happens. Do we have sound? Yeah, we got sound. So, I'm now ready for recording. Let me tuck in the metronome and... Okay. Okay, now deactivating. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's, it's, it's just the beginning. <laughs> so, now we're turning over to disk so that we can hear what we uh, uh, have uh, 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 saved on the hard disk. And let's check the recording. Yeah, okay. 
that's our first recording. This workflow is very known in the Windows and Mac world. And uh, now for my next audio recording, I will use an external application that I hook up with the capabilities of the Jack server. So first, let me make another audio track. And as external, as an external application, I'm using the RackerRack -rack Guitar Effects Suite. It's, well, let's say the equivalent to Native Instruments, Guitar Rig, or IK Multimedia Amplitube. So I got the right preset in it, so we can put it down. And now we are switching over to Katya. And you see, I got now here the RecoRec application, but there are no connections between Ardor and RecoRec. So what is it what I want to do? I want to put this effects application between my physical audio input and the audio input of my newly created audio track. So for better understanding, I'm switching over to the second input channel. Let me deactivate all these routings there. And now it's like doing an effect chain uh, on a guitar pedal board uh, uh, for, for your guitar setup. So now I'm clicking Capture 2 to the input of Recorec. And the output of Recorec, well, it's going to the input of my newly created audio track. So back again in Ardu. Let me arm the track. And now we should hear a nice little distorted sound. Yeah, OK, that's it. So again, we're ready for recording. Let us check it again. Yeah, nothing simpler than that. So, and you might wonder yourself, um, what I have shown you with audio is also valid for MIDI. So my next recordings will be MIDI recordings. And my first track is a track where I will going to use an internal virtual instrument. So, and for that, I'm choosing the very, very famous Synet Sub Effects synthesizer. It's, uh, well, let's say, uh, it's nearly the same as the very famous Cork M1 audio workstation. And, uh, well, Synet Sub Effects reflects this in the Linux world. And again, we can open the user interface with a simple double click. Now, let me choose a sound that's Super Saw 2. And now we can close it. So we're ready again for recording. So and when I'm now typing in some uh, keys, uh, uh, we should hear some sound. Oops. Oops, nothing's coming. Well, then let's switch over to Katya again. And as you can see here, this rectangle, the output of my nano key, there is no connection. So. We only have to do a connection between the output of my nano key keyboard to my newly created MIDI track. Oops, done. So, and when I'm now typing in some uh, uh, keys, well, okay, now we get sound. So, again, ready to record. Okay. 
So let me tweak this recording a little bit. MIDI, MIDI, quantize, quantizing in quarters. OK, so let's check this again. Yeah. OK, and okay. first a little bit sip of coffee. <coughs> so, and now guess what's coming next. Yeah, OK, a MIDI recording while using another external application. And let me first create a track, this time without any virtual instrument. And as an external application, I will use, I will use, uh, come on, the hydrogen drum machine. Normally, that's a whole production system where you can uh, uh, program patterns, you can chain patterns uh, uh, to hold songs. It comes with an internal mixing desk and an effects section and things like that. And, well, it's an external application. It has got no interfaces. And for my demonstration, I will uh, use hydrogen as a simple sound source. So we can close this. There's nothing else to do in it. So, and now let us think, what is it what I want to do? I want to play on my keyboard. What I'm playing on the keyboard should be recorded onto Ardor. And at the same time, my playing should trigger the sounds in hydrogen. And of course, I also want to hear what hydrogen is making for sound. So let's switch back to Katya, and there you can see we got a MIDI rectangle and an audio rectangle of hydrogen. As you can see over here, the audio outputs are directly rooted to the physical outputs of my audio interface. But that's not what I have in mind, so let me disconnect them. And instead of this, I'm routing the audio outputs directly to the main stereo bus of Ardor. This is done this way. Well, you can also create another stereo audio track and route the audio outputs of hydrogen directly to this stereo audio track for uh, uh, extra recording the audio. But for my demonstration, routing it directly to the main stereo bus is uh, sufficient. Well, OK, now let's recapitulate it. I want to play on my keyboard, and my playing should be recorded in Ardor. So, the first thing is I'm making a connection to my newly created MIDI track. So Ardo is aware of what I'm playing. So and now the next thing is I have to connect the audio, the, the, the MIDI track with the MIDI input of hydrogen. We got the MIDI output of my track and I'm connecting it with the input of hydrogen. So let's get back to Ardo. Let's arm the track. And when I'm now typing in some notes, we should hear some drum sounds. <coughs> yeah, OK. That's it. Let me re record it again. Again, a little bit of tweaking, again in quarters. So, and there you have seen recording uh, in the normal way that you know from Windows, Mac OS. It's just as simple as that. And uh, using the capabilities of uh, the, the Jack Sound Server while using this Katya uh, front end is also not so difficult. And, uh, well, the next steps you can do, uh, you can refine your mix.
For example, Ardor comes with a mixer where you can uh, refine uh, all those uh, uh, recordings. Uh, you can edit them in the same way, uh, copying, pasting, uh, trimming, uh, uh, things like that. And uh, uh, after that, if you are finished with it, you can uh, uh, bounce your project to a stereo file. These are also very uh, uh, common processes also in the Linux world. Well, okay, and when you're now finished with your project and with all your active applications and all these complex routings, when you finish it and when you close it all down and, well, let's say two days later, you want to uh, recall this project again, well, is it necessary that you have start every single application one by one and redo all these uh, routings again? No, that's not necessary because because Linux also comes with a very handy solution. There are uh, 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 there is a type of application which is called Session Manager. And here in uh, uh, my setup, we got Claudia, and Claudia is such a session manager. This application recognizes and memorizes every step you do for your audio setup. It uh, uh, memorizes which applications you have started as well as all the connections. You can see it, the graphical representation is a little bit different, but it uh, reflects every aspect that I have done in Katya. You see Recorec over here. There well, we have the hydrogen MIDI part, the hydrogen audio part, things like that. Well, and now you can save this setting onto a file. And the next time you want to start your project, the first thing you do is to start the session manager. You look up for the file, you load the file, and everything will come up automatically. It's pure magic, including every audio routing. So this is this, and uh, I hope you have seen now that's neither difficult nor is it rocket science. OK, now let us recapitulate what you have seen and learned so far. And let's start again with this Linux audio scheme. As I've s told you, audio hardware detected by the hardware driver. We got our audio applications and Jack as the communication officer between the hardware as well as between every active application. Okay, now um, let me step a little bit more back and let's start again with the audio hardware. There is really a vast amount of different audio hardware out there in the market, but uh, nowadays uh, uh, nearly every modern audio hardware is equipped with a USB interface. So as I have said it several times, uh, recognition of USB hardware is done via the ELSA driver, but uh, could it be that there are any restrictions? The answer is, well, very simple. There are no restrictions. Nearly every modern hardware as well as uh, uh, an older hardware, for example, this little interface now is about 10 or 11 years old, and it works without any problem. Uh, I have to admit there are uh, some restrictions, and there are pages on the internet listing what kind of hardware will work and will not work. But for USB, the number is, is really, really, really low for, that, for this. So uh, starting right away with uh, audio, uh, with USB hardware, there will be no problem. Okay, the next thing, let me step a little bit more back. That's for the uh, newbies uh, who want to install a Linux system. You might ask yourself now, hmm, what kind of Linux should I use for audio production? And that's a really good question because out there in the Linux world, 
there are <laughs> endless distributions, all with their own look, all with their own combination of applications and things like that. But I get some recommendations and uh, again some solutions. There are three multimedia audio distributions out there. Uh, and those distributions do have uh, 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 several advantages. Uh, for example, they are also coming with nearly the same amount of uh, audio applications. For example, Ardo is uh, uh, included in every one of them, as well as Jack and, uh, for example, the hydrogen drum machine, things like that. The other advantage of choosing one of those three is uh, AV Linux is based on Debian and the other two distributions are based on Ubuntu. And those two distributions are, well, let's say, the mainstream in the Linux world. So if you encounter any problems with your uh, distributions, you can be sure that there is a giant help base out there for uh, uh, getting solutions for your problems. I'm coming to the next advantages in choosing one of those uh, uh, distributions. Well, no, it, it's valid for every Linux distribution. Uh, you can download a Linux distribution, you can put it on a DVD or a USB stick, and then you can load your Linux distribution without installing anything on your computer. So you can evaluate and test Linux without doing any harm to your computer. Uh, for example, my demonstration is done with such a live installation and uh, uh, nothing was installed. And uh, afterwards, if you have made your choice, then there are some uh, uh, more choices. Uh, if you want to install Linux, you can install it as a single operating system, for example, on an older computer, or you can install Linux in parallel besides your other operating system, which is also valid for uh, uh, Windows and Mac OS. So these are very comfortable and convenient uh, uh, solutions. Uh, so this is this, and the next thing, Let's summarize the uh, uh, most important terminology. Again, hardware driver, ELSA. The sound server, first choice for doing audio production, the jack server. And well, the, well, okay, popular, but the most modern plugin formats nowadays, LV2 and Linux VST. And uh, well, okay, you have seen it in the plugin manager of Ardo. Latzba as well as DSSI are the, well, predecessors. Uh, they are a little bit outdated, but they are still in use. And uh, the last thing I want to show you is this. I have shown you the capabilities of uh, the Jack server with the Cadence, Katya, Claudia applications. These uh, applications are coming together with the KX Studio distribution. You can install uh, these applications manually to the Linux distribution of your choice, but there is also another front end which is called QJack Control. And uh, uh, you can be sure that uh, Every Linux distribution is coming with QJack control as a front end. But it depends on uh, uh, to your own uh, uh, likings and to your own taste what kind of front end you will gonna use. Me, myself, uh, uh, QJack control, I find it a little bit, uh, well, old and um, not very comprehensible with its Windows 95 touch and things like that. But you have to, you have to try it for yourself. Uh, 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 that's the last uh, uh, hint that I want to give you. And um, maybe you are coming, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, deal better with QJack control uh, than with Canon's Katya Claudia, things like that. But uh, I think 
doing this on uh, Katya, Claudia, and Cadence was much more uh, comprehensible than uh, uh, this. So, in the end, if there are no questions, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I want to wish you a nice and wonderful day here at the Sonic Convention and with all the other interesting and uh, exciting lectures. Thank you. <coughs> when we have questions, we can use the microphone so it's recorded on the video. Hello, thank you for the talk. Sorry, my English is not very good. Oh, I, I try. Uh, so, you said that uh, nearly all hardware is uh, yeah. supported. Yeah, but often the hardware comes with the uh, configuration software like this, where yeah. you can choose the buffer size and something like this. Uh, yeah, you you come a little bit late, huh? Okay, let me show you this. <laughs> we got here the cadence uh, uh, the cadence uh, uh, dialog, and when you dial in the jack settings, you can see over here you can uh, dial in uh, the sampling rate, the sample buffer, and much more. So uh, uh, this is all uh, 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 all included uh, uh, in there. Uh, you are right. If there are some extra applications for uh, uh, programming, uh, 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 well, let's say exotic parameters on a uh, um, uh, on an audio hardware, well, that's. That's not as easy, but the main functions, uh, uh, like for example controllers on a USB keyboard uh, uh, that you will use for tweaking, for example, the cutoff frequency on a synthesizer, uh, this is done by using the capabilities of the digital audio workstation. You don't have to uh, uh, use a special uh, editor for it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, also in, in my experience, really nearly every modern hardware is uh, uh, recognized. I have used it with the uh, Mackie Onyx USB interfaces, which were released half a year ago, and uh, it works without any problem, even with a Raspberry Pi computer. And the same goes with the uh, uh, IRIC, uh, uh, IRIC I.O. keyboard from IK Multimedia. Uh, there were the only problem I had was working with the Line 6 audio interface, but that has to do with licensing uh, uh, the audio hardware uh, to the server of Line 6. That's really an exception, but most of the audio hardware should work uh, uh, without any problem. Um, sorry, may I go first? Thanks. Uh, do you also have any experience with recent um, multi-channel audio hardware like Focusrite boards, Sapphire, etc.? Any experience if these also work as flawless as you think for USB devices? Uh, on the uh, USB, uh, in the USB f uh, sector, no, I don't have any uh, experience, but I can assure you, uh, working with a Firewire audio interface, uh, that's really no problem, because you can uh, define the number of input and output channels. And uh, uh, for example, if you choose an uh, eight channel audio interface and you only dial in two input channels, Katya will only show you two input channels. But if you want to have more input channels, uh, you can change the number of input channels and uh, Katya will show you your new newly defined input channels. I also have a question about this. Beware. <laughs> uh, excuse me? No, no, go on, go on. <laughs> All right. Uh, I also have a question about the session management. Yeah. Uh, you, you said that um, it will um, store everything and restore everything. Uh, does yeah. it also ma mean that when you um, make some um, changes inside a rack, -a -rack or hydrogen, for example? No, 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 no. That's 
that's for sure. If you do any uh, uh, editing in the, uh, uh, in the applications, you have to save those editings firstly onto your uh, uh, application. So when I'm creating a new uh, uh, guitar effects chain on Recorec, that's for sure. I have to uh, save it onto Recorec and uh, 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 the session manager will not cover this. No, that's, that's clear, I but hope. <laughs> but, but is it possible for the session manager to like, know which file on the disk uh, is associated with with the session, like, uh, oh, we need to open Hydrogen with this and this file uh, for this no, uh, session. No, that, that, that you will do uh, uh, in the saving... Uh, yes, 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 norm norm <laughs> normally, yeah. Maybe maybe Niels can, can answer this a uh, little bit more better. Huh? Yeah, it depends on the ses ma session manager. There are... Um, he said earlier it's a type of software, a session manager. So, um, for example, the um, non session manager, which is the name, non session manager, um, that, uh, that saves the settings and knows where the files are. But um, so there's a general approach which, which uh, just starts your program and makes connections. And um, this works with every software. But um, if you support, if the program supports the non session manager, protocol directly then everything is saved so uh, you don't you, ca you can't even save manually anymore it's just automatically saved wow. so that's uh, maybe we will see that during uh, the, the day or tomorrow let's see Thanks. yeah okay hi thanks uh, great talk I wish I'd been told this when I was starting out uh, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but uh, I think we're all in, in we're all computationally hep, and we know how how a lot of this stuff works. But I have a lot of friends who uh, who haven't even used a uh, command line before, and I just wonder if you have any tips for people who want to try this out, who have absolutely no idea even about how to create a bootable USB, you know, really basic new uh, kind of... No, uh, when you're, when you're uh, looking on the uh, internet for a Linux audio distribution, uh, uh, there are always uh, uh, very detailed information of how you can put it onto a, uh, a DVD or a bootable uh, USB media. Uh, for example, for doing a Linux uh, distribution on a USB stick, you have to use a, uh, a little application, for example, UNet Boot. You can get this application uh, uh, for Windows, Mac, as well as Linux. And while using this little application, then the ESO file of the Linux distribution will be uh, uh, well decompressed and be written be written on the uh, USB disk. But it's always uh, uh, always explained on the uh, uh, on the internet pages of the uh, uh, Linux distributions. So. That's, this should not be a problem. Right. So it's like, so it's read the freaking manual kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Reading the fucking manual. Well, <laughs> if you if you want to get some knowledge, you have to do this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Or any comments? Anything you would like to act, uh, add? Yeah, um, in relation to dual booting and multi things, if you if you are used to using the Mac, it's easier to use something like uh, um, VirtualBox and then run your Linux inside the Mac without fanning around the hard drive. I mean, it's live a bit easier. Um, yeah. And live distributions, you can make live. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. You don't care. It's just that's that, no. that because once you start um, fixing your grub partitions, you can be in a world of pain, even if you know what you're yeah. doing. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, then we have um, some time pre to prepare the next talk. Thank you again, yeah. um, Georg, for uh, the talk. Yeah. And um, from now on, if anybody asks you, how do I do this, just tell them we have a recording.
Look at this. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.